identify with Christ? Is my affection set on him? So here we are. We're at the place where we have to guard our hearts. So how do I set my affections on things above? What are the things above? How? What? What am I setting my affections on? So I had to look for it. I said, okay, God, what are those things? And all I have is words, so I'm going to point out a few of these things that we should be loving to do. <coughs> if we be risen with Christ, we should be, there's four, I got four points here. The first one is sanctification. We should be looking for how do I sanctify myself? How do I set myself apart from what, what does that really mean? We should be seeking to understand the holiness and grow, in, grow to love the holiness that God is talking about. The second thing we should be doing is building a house for the Lord. He said, thy house not made with hands. My house, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So the church, God's house, we, his people, are the church. It should be this here. This flesh should be called a house of prayer. God, uh, we should be, the third thing, we should be looking to help ensure the salvation of others. We should be looking to lead others to Christ. And the last one of the point we should be doing, we should be giving unto the Lord. Now, I was as I was doing my study, as I was doing my research, I could not get all four of those points in 30 minutes. I just couldn't do it. So, guess what? You're going to have to stay tuned for the rest of them. So today, we're going to deal with sanctification. Amen? Amen. When the Lord brought the children out of Israel, when he brought them out of bondage, out of Egypt, he allowed them to wander through a dry place for 40 years. Why? Why did God allow them to wander through the wilderness for 40 years? Because the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, their affections were for the things of Egypt. Hmm. They had not been around God. They did not know who God was, so they didn't know. All they knew is they prayed to him, and now he has showed up, but he's leading them away from a place of where they're comfortable, Egypt, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to set their, their affections wasn't right. Their affections were still in Egypt, so they didn't know his ways, and, and many longed for the things that they had left behind. You know, uh, Exodus 13, uh, verse 1, it reads this. He said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast. It is mine. You know, I, I, I like that. The firstborn child in your family, guess who they belong to? <coughs> they belong to God, amen. So you better, look, he, he better pay attention. And Moses said, verse 3, Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. You should remember the day when you came and gave your life to Christ. Remember that day because when you came and gave your life to Christ, you have now set yourself on a path to be sanctified. That is the first thing we must learn to do. How do I do that? Well, I got to separate myself from the things I'm coming away from. You can't, sometimes boo ain't going to come with you, okay? Sometimes your children ain't going to come. Sometimes your family ain't going to understand. I remember when I first started going to uh, the church in Hawaii where I, I, I gathered where I learned a lot about this gospel. My mom. But people used to say sometimes they, they think you're in a cult. Are you in a cult? You... <laughs> no, I'm loving God. <coughs> Ain't nothing I'm doing is outside of these books, but I'm setting myself apart. <coughs> <coughs> There's some things in my house I had to throw away. I had to, I, I had to, <laughs> I had to throw myself under the bus. I had this big, beautiful brass bed with marble, uh, uh, fixtures on it. it. 
it was beautiful. But I kept getting some crazy dreams at night. This was at, I'm like, Lord, what is this? I'm serving you in these. What is this? He said, get rid of the bed. I'm like, okay. So I got the bed. I'm like, well, I can sell this. He said, no. Destroy it. So I, uh, if you look in the if you look in uh, 1 Kings, you'll find out where he told Saul to destroy all. It was that 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, he told Saul to destroy all, and Saul didn't do it. So he led me to that point in scripture, and he said, destroy all. And so I got the bed, and I, I threw the mattress out and cut it up, and I beat the bed frame down to nothing and was sleeping on the floor. My mom said, uh... You in a cult? <laughs> but I was sanctifying myself. I was setting myself apart from the things I used to do. You know, spirits travel. So if you know anything about spirits, you know they were still connected to the place in which I laid my head. So I had to get rid of it. Ah, y'all don't want to, you don't want to believe that you're in spiritual warfare, but you are, whether, whether you open your eyes to it or not. You in spiritual warfare. And so that began to affect me in my sleep. And after I threw it away and laid down on the floor for a week or two, I was good. No problems. None of them were no crazy dreams. But I just thank God because of the sanctification process. As you begin to come out, there's some things you have to loose yourself from. And a lot of spirits travel through idols and, and treating uh, uh, objects that you have in your home. In Exodus, the 19th chapter, he says, it was, they were in the third month after they had come out of Egypt. And he told Moses in 9, verse 9, verse 10, he said, The Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today. And tomorrow, let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people among, upon Mount Sinai. So it was three months they had been traveling in the desert. Three months they had been set apart in a dry place. And now the Lord wanted to come speak with them. So he, that tells me something right here. When you sanctify yourself, you must clean all that stuff around you. You know, some of us don't like to keep a clean house. And you wonder why the Holy Ghost ain't came up in there. Well... He ain't going to dwell in your mess. So I'm just telling you, housekeeping, if they have not told you, clean your house. He tells them to wash their clothes. It tells them to prepare that the Lord is coming to see you on this third day. So they set themselves apart even more. They cleansed themselves, and on the third day, God was coming to speak to them. So it tells me in this word that after about 90 days of serving God, about 90 days of sanctifying yourself, you should be setting yourself to hear from him. You should be blessed because he said, I'm the Lord God and I change not. So therefore, set yourself as his word has said here. He was coming to speak to the people, but they didn't want to, they didn't want to hear him, but We'll, we'll keep on with the story. The sanctification is a process and it will always cause us to go into a place where we're not familiar with, but it is designed by God to loose us from the things of Egypt. It is designed by God to bring us out from the things that we're used to. Even though Egypt was a place of bondage, many people enjoyed the comforts of bondage. I'm going to say that again. Even though Egypt was a place of bondage, many people enjoyed the comforts of being, the God's chosen people enjoyed the comforts of being in bondage. What am I saying? There are some people that really enjoy living off of welfare. Ah, don't you know the government is paying you to be broke? They're paying you to be poor. But we enjoying that 200, 500, whatever them food steps add up to, and, and, and the free rent of where you have to add 50, 60 dollars to. People are stuck in the minimum wage. They are stuck because they want, they, they're in bondage because of social security, and, and they're incarcerated. You know, I, I teach a, a class in the prison system, and one thing I really find amazing is that when people go to jail, especially my brothers, they get in there and they get comfortable. 
are comfortable in jail. You in there playing cards and arguing like you at home because you are in jail. You cannot be comfortable when somebody telling you you're going to eat mush at this hour and you're going to eat that at this hour and you cannot get full because I'm only going to give you one scoop of this and one scoop of that. How are you comfortable enough to be playing cards when you shouldn't be setting your mind on the things of God so you can get out that place and get to a place where God has for you? Amen? We get comfortable instead of understanding this is not where the Lord wants you to be, but many have found it too comfortable in those places. And, and I'll say this for the people that's in jail and those that know people in jail. Everybody I know that went to jail, and I've been in prison ministry for almost 15, 17, 18 years. <clears throat> Everybody that got serious with God got out of jail. I don't care what their sentence was. So you got a loved one in jail, tell them to get serious with God. Tell them to get serious with God and don't be playing, and they will get out. But they have to remain steadfast in him or they'll go right back. I'm going to put it right out there. Amen? But you have to get serious and God will get you out of Egypt. Amen? <coughs> Even those that are on welfare and, and public assistance. You know, I, I'm not talking about those that are, 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 are just permanently and cannot do nothing, but I'm talking about those that have the ability to use their mind to use their physical strength to do something, get out of that place of comfortability and move to a place that's uncomfortable for you and allow God to grow you. Ah, we got to step out. We, many people don't want to step out and take responsibility for their own lives. They want to get to heaven and say, well, God, this is what they did to me. This is what God, and what did you do? What did you do? We must take responsibility and we have to have accountability until we come to a place of maturity in this gospel. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, right, right after the sanctification process or in that process, one of the things Moses did was he gave the children the Ten Commandments. You'll find it right after Exodus 19 and Exodus 20. He gave them the Ten Commandments. They were taught that they were taught the do's and don'ts of the kingdom in order that they might grow and live and be blessed. Amen? And that they might prosper in the land in which God was leading them. Once you learn the truth, then you are not blown away by every wind of doctrine that somebody will tell you. You will not mess up if certain things are not in place. You will be able to be steadfast, unmovable, because I have learned what thus saith the Lord. Ah, in Leviticus 20, the seventh chapter, it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. So God will sanctify you. He will bring you to that place and where he can bless you because you belong to him. Now, we must learn to set our affections on the things that are above. If... if Say, if, if you have not set yourself, your affection on sanctification, if you have not learned to love holiness, the blessings that God will pour out on you, your life will be without measure if you take up what he is talking about and what you are to learn. If you learn to set yourself apart, if you learn to not run with the crowd, God will be a blessing to you because you honor him. Because now you're a vessel that he can, he can use. This is the sanctification. And it is a process. During this process, you're, you're learning about your Lord and how much he loves you. You're learning how to love him. You, you, you just can't meet somebody and start loving him. you got to learn how to love God. God, God, you can't treat God like you treat everybody else. Oh, he'll understand it for a while. But see, God got some stipulations, you know. He said, if you go come to me, how come you ain't on your knees? You just can't, God ain't your homeboy. He God. You got me. When you, when you come to him and you're just talking to him when you get started, that's good when you get started. But after you've been there for a while, you're going to have to learn biology. After you've been there for a while, you're going to have to learn how to lift up your hands. After you've been there for a while, you're going to have to learn how to praise him and be grateful for his presence. After you've been there for a while, you have to learn 
his commandments and how he blesses, you understand you get something on the inside of you to uh, begin to move it and make you want to cry out to him uh, after you've been there for a while. Uh, woo! Uh, I had to go to Deuteronomy 8 chapter and he said in verse 2, he said, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord God led me these 40 years. See, while God is, is teaching you the sanctification process, he's learning you, he's letting you know that you have to be humble before him. You have to be humble before all mankind. He said, no, he said God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in your heart. God wants to know what's in your heart. You're supposed to guard your heart. You're supposed to give, set your affections on the things of him. But once he pulls you out from under the, 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 the once he pulls you out of the sanctification process and put you back with people, what will you do? <coughs> so he got to prove you. So I'm telling you now, if you come out of Egypt and he placed you in the land where he's going to bring you, he's got to test you. He's got to see what's in your heart. What you plan on doing with the things that he's going to bless you with now? Ah, whether it was thou keep. He want to know whether you're going to keep his commandments or not. In verse 3, he said, He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread alone only, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So God will now allow you to live let you live in any type of position to let you know that he is always there for you. Amen? Ah, when, when I was putting this together and, and talking about this sanctification process, it reminded me of some young fellas I had. I had known when in studying his word about these, these three Hebrew boys uh, 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 that was in the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel, the first chapter, Daniel and, and his buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were there in, in, in Babylon. They were in captivity, and they had set their affections on the things of God. These were young men. These weren't old men. These were young men that had made up their mind that they were going to live for God. Amen? So in verse 4, it tells me that these children, that when, when the king of Babylon showed up, he said, select me some people that, that I can teach them the tongue of the Chaldeans and, and let them let me see what they are. You know, make sure they clean and, and got some stuff going on about them. Make sure they got some wisdom already. And so when he seen that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had already had the favor of God on their life because he chose those who had no blemish, blemish but were well favored and skillful in all wisdom cunning and knowledge and understanding science. So he got some people that were smart, okay? So when you walk with God, his favor will be upon your life. No matter who you come across, you, you will hear things like, I don't know why I like you, but I do. You hear that from your enemy, you know, or, or there's just something about you that, 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 that's drawing me to you. That's something about, you see, don't get it twisted. It's, it ain't you, it's the anointing, it's the presence of God in your life that allows people to say, wait, wait, I'm going to show some favor towards you. I'm going to put you in a place because guess what? I like you for some reason, <laughs> but it's God that they like. It's the, it's the God in you that's drawing them over there. Oh, he said the king appointed to them daily provision for the king's meat and wine so that they could be nourished for the three years. So, so he set them apart for three years and he appointed them the stuff that he eats. He appointed them the, the wine that he drinks. He wanted them to have the best. So the king thought he was eating the best. <laughs> and so when it came to Daniel and, and, and Shadrach and Meshach, they tell them this. It says in verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart. He did what he purposed in his heart. We're talking about the heart here. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. See, apparently the king had a pig served every day with that apple thrown in his mouth. Huh? And he said, no, no, no. My God tell me I can't eat the pork. And so since I'm purposing to be like my father, since I'm going to do what he said do, guess what? He said, look, I I don't want to do this. I, I purpose not to defile myself before my God. So he said, guess what? So he talked to the eunuch, the one that was in charge, and he told him, he said, look, I, I, I 
understand that you're trying to give me the best. <laughs> but why don't you let me, let me just eat what I've been eating and then you come back and check us 20 days, 10 days later and see if our countenance have changed versus those that have been eating the king's meat. So the eunuch told him, look, I fear for my life. I fear my life and I fear the king. But I tell you what, I'll give you a chance to do what you're doing. See, God had given Daniel favor. See, what they say, favor ain't fair. <laughs> favor ain't, it ain't fair. <laughs> because you know, it's not about you. But it's about your purpose in your heart. <laughs> when you purpose in your heart to please God, <laughs> the favor of the Lord will be upon you always. <laughs> no matter what situation you find yourself in, his favor will be upon you. His right. favor was upon them even though they were in captivity because they purpose in their heart to please him. So after them 10 days, he came back to check on them. And he said, look on their countenances. And at the end of the day, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter than the flesh of all the men and children which did eat the king's portion. And so as for these four, verse 17, he said, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. God will give you some stuff because you purpose to please him. Amen. Amen. So what am I setting my heart, my affections on when you purpose in your heart to please God? God will bless you. He will keep you. He will bring you out. He will bring you forward. He will continue to bless you. God will always keep his eye on those that purpose to please him. Amen. Amen. So the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the, they, they stood before the king. So he chose them to be his advisors because of what they because they had become what God will put you in a position. Always put you in a position. And see, God got always, he, he got a way of putting you, not, you normally not the lead, but you're his second chair. The king didn't give up his position, but he put them in charge of everything that was under him. He did the same thing for Joseph. When Joseph came and Joseph was locked up and he brought him up and he gave him, interpreted his dream, he told Joseph, he said, there'll be none above you but me. So God has a way. When you humble yourself and set your affections on the things for him, he will begin to bless you. Amen. So what is about my heart? My heart, I have the purpose in my heart to please God. I got to be in a place of sanctification. I got to set myself apart and learn of him. I got to walk away from the things of Egypt. I got to turn away from them things and get to a place where now I can please and bless my God. Amen. Collins Galatians 3, it said, if ye be, then be risen with Christ. Seek those things that are above which where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above and not on the things of this earth. The sanctification process, first part, you should set your affection on. Learn how to do what God say do. Read his word, understand, and purpose in your heart to keep what do what he say do. Are you going to get it right all the time? No, you're not. But what does your heart say? God don't look at your mouth. He look at your heart. Did you purpose in your heart to love him? To keep his commandments? That's why 1 John 1 and 9 is there. He said he's faithful and just to forgive all those that confess their sins. So confess them. Is there some consequences come with that? Yes, yeah, a couple. But he will give you the peace of his presence, even to go through the consequences in which you create him. You've got to love God. I love him. There was a song right there that he just got this one little line in the lyrics. He said, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. You gotta love him. And you gotta love the process. I pray that you stay tuned on next week when we get to begin to move through this process about our hearts and how we set our affections on the things of God. Because next we're going to, we're going to deal with building that house for the Lord. We're going to deal with how do I 
set my affections on the things of God on above and how do I build that house? Well, I'm going to give you a little key right here. Building that house starts with you. It starts with your prayer life. It starts with, with what you're focused on. And then there's also a house in the kingdom which you'll be building by your good works. See, your works will be judged. And if it's able to come through the fire, there's a reward for that in heaven, not on earth. Many of us, too many of us are accepting the rewards here on earth. And you get to heaven, you ain't, ain't going to have nothing. Because you didn't got your reward already. Let your reward come from God. Quit looking for the pastor to bless you after you didn't gave your money. Give to God and God alone. And trust that the pastor will do what God say do with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. With that being said, this is Kingdom Application Ministries. And I hope to see you.